In our lifetime, we've all had a fall and developed a bruise somewhere on our body. It's part of growing up. But did you know that you can also bruise your brain? What happens when this vital organ gets bruised? In this video, we'll be exploring what brain contusions are, how they can affect your brain and body, who gets them, and how we diagnose them. We'll also cover treatment and long-term outcomes as well. So what is a contusion? A brain contusion is a bruise on the brain from a head injury or from surgery, but most of the time it's due to trauma. You can suffer from a single, small contusion or bruise, or much larger ones that are more widespread. The symptoms you could experience will depend on the extent of the contusions. This means that you can have symptoms ranging from headache and concussion all the way through to coma. So what are the key clinical features one should look out for? If the impact is small and bruising is not too large, large, then contusions can have relatively minor clinical signs and symptoms, like headaches or dizziness. However, much like a sprained ankle, sometimes swelling can accompany the bruising and it's quite large. Loss of consciousness, swelling and severe bleeding within the brain can occur as a result. Severe contusions can significantly affect normal brain function and cause symptoms like confusion, drowsiness, memory loss balance issues or agitation. Patients might also start vomiting or complaining of changes to their vision if the swelling in the brain gets much worse. So who's at risk? As you can imagine, anybody going through repeated knocks to the head can be at risk of developing contusions. Don't worry, this doesn't mean a one-off hit to the head. It's certainly going to be something more severe than banging your head against the wall once, for example. Brain contusions can result from any knock to the head and are common to those who play high-risk sports like boxing and football. The film Concussion, released in 2015, highlighted the effects of long-term, repeated head injuries. It's likely that some of those athletes may have sustained contusions. If you're confused about the difference between concussions and contusions, you can check out the article on our website, which I've linked to in the description below. So, how do we go about diagnosing contusions? Like with any patient that we see, we're going to be taking a good history and examination, and that's one of the keys in working out a diagnosis. But contusions can only be diagnosed on CT, that's computed tomography scans, or MRI scans. If you end up in hospital, the most likely first scan you're going to receive is a CT. It's rapid, highly accurate, and it uses computers and rotating x-ray machines to form cross-sectional images of the brain. Using a CT scan, we can see where the bruising is, how big the bruising might be, and if there's already any swelling that's developing around it, pushing on the rest of the brain. Treatment depends on how severe the size and the symptoms are that you're experiencing. If bleeding and swelling are small with minor symptoms, then you might be observed in hospital for a period of 24 hours or more, depending on the severity of the contusions. You'll be observed for behavioural symptoms like confusion, mood changes, as well as key clinical signs of a rising pressure in your head. These could be headache, vomiting, sensitivity to light, and confusion. If you take blood thinning medications, you'll probably be asked to stop them temporarily to reduce the risk of those bruises bleeding and getting worse. But this will only be after discussion with a neurosurgeon. Patients who experience severe swelling or bruising are usually admitted to a high dependency unit or intensive care. Here, treatment can range anything from close observation in a high dependency unit or even an induced coma to help the brain recover. Some medications such as dexamethasone, which is a steroid, might also be started to reduce any swelling in the brain. We might start anti-seizure medications if the bruising has been bad enough to cause seizures. In some other cases, a small probe might be placed on the surface of the brain to monitor the pressures inside the skull, and this is called an intracranial pressure monitor or ICP bolt. We've got a video about that and we'll link to it down below. If the swelling or bleeding is too much, a patient may also have to undergo something called a decompressive craniectomy, which is where a portion of the skull is removed to let the brain swell without being compressed by the skull. Thankfully, this isn't that common an operation, but it can be life-saving if required. So what are the complications that can occur? Complications of brain contusions change 
as per the severity of the trauma and how much swelling there is around it. In severe cases, patients can get seizures, altered states of consciousness, go into coma and sometimes even die as a result, but that is very uncommon. The long-term picture for patients who experience these contusions differs depending on the severity of the injury. Many people who experience minor brain contusions can take around three to six months at the minimum to recover, but they can go on to live healthy and fulfilling lives. However, some people with moderate to severe traumas, more widespread contusions and more swelling can take significantly longer to recover and may experience symptoms for the rest of their lives. They may have problems with concentration, mood changes, as well as other behavioural symptoms. Gradually, they do get better and people can get back to relatively normal day-to-day -day activities. So what can I do to prevent myself from getting contusions? The prevention of contusions relies heavily on preventing trauma in the first place. So good health behaviours to include might be wearing your seatbelt when you're driving or making sure that the airbags are on and that they're fully functional. If you're riding a bicycle or a motorbike, don't be one of those people that doesn't wear a helmet because when you do fall and hit your head, you'll wish you had. Wear protective gear when playing high risk sports such as boxing and football. Be sure to follow correct guidelines for appropriate alcohol intake. We see a lot of contusions and people that have gone out have been doing a lot of binge drinking and have fallen and have hit their heads. In the elderly precautions should be taken in homes, there should be handrails if needed, non-slip mats in bathrooms, good lighting around the house. Additionally it's important to install safety gates and child safety locks around the home if you've got children as children between the ages of one and four can be vulnerable to these injuries too. So the key take-home messages are that brain contusions are bruising on the brain tissue and there are varying degrees of them, range from mild, moderate to severe. Contusions can present with headaches and dizziness and mood and behavioural changes but it's quite a broad spectrum. They can occur due to general head trauma from a fall or a motor vehicle accident and are common in those who play high risk sports like boxing and football. The elderly and very young patients are also quite susceptible to traumatic brain injuries and contusions. Diagnosis is usually done via CT and treatments can range anything from observation of mood and behaviour, medications to stop seizures and reduce swelling, all the way through to intracranial pressure monitoring and sometimes surgery. This series of videos is supported by the NIHR Global Health Research Group on Neurotrauma, whose aim is to improve global neurotrauma trauma care and we've linked to them down in the description below.